welcome back to Knitting Nicely. I'm Danielle Chauvet, and in this video, you will learn how to do a little I-cord loop at the end of a bind off on the top of your hot pad. If you'd like to see how I do the invisible bind off on a double knitted project, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Okay, so now we only have three stitches, um, three on each side, left of our kitchener grafting. And as you can see here, this is the line of grafting that I finished all the way across. Now you can see it's kind of bubbled up because it's just, now it's just a continuous fabric that goes from one side all the way to the other. Um, and it, while you're blocking, if you want to make that lay down a little bit flatter, um, you can just press down as you block it so that it'll lay a little bit more flat um, instead of kind of bubbled at the end. Um, I'm gonna block this for sure because this this is kind of expanding a little bit right here and I actually do want my hot pad to be slightly larger so I'll probably pull it a little bit this way and I'll pull it a little bit this way and that'll take care of this extra um, ease that I have right here. So the rest of it will be pulled and pulled. Okay, so for today though, we are going to show you how to do the um, little I-cord loop That'll be the little handle for your hot pad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the yarn that I used for my Kitchener off of the tapestry needle because I don't need it on my tapestry needle anymore. So I'm just gonna slip that right off. Oops. And you'll need your double pointed needle for this as well, for this I-cord part. Ooh. Something's about to fall off, okay. I'm going to take my yarn off of my tapestry needle. Okay. And then I'm going to put it to, towards the back because I'm going to actually knit these stitches now. And my I want my eye cord to only be a three stitch eye cord. You can make your eye cord as thick as you'd like. I think a, a three stitch eye cord is a nice thickness for a loop on a hot pad. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my second double pointed needle and I'm going to go through both the front, uh, both the stitch on this needle and the stitch on the back needle at the same time as if to knit. And I'm going to wrap my dark yarn, I don't want to get tingled here, I'm going to wrap my dark yarn around and then knit those two stitches together. Okay and then slip those two stitches off the end. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the next stitch. Put my needle through both of them as if to knit. Wrap my yarn around and knit those two together. And then the same thing for the last two stitches. Knit them together. Oops, that got loose. I'm gonna pull it tight. There we go. And so we're gonna knit those two those two together and then I can take these away because I don't need these two anymore and we're only going to use double pointed needles now so I guess I still need this all right so if you haven't ever done I-cord I-cord is just um, it's simply knitting in the same direction each row so every row I'm gonna knit from here to here I'm gonna slide the stitches back over to the end and knit from here to here. Always going in this direction. You never turn the work. Okay, so I'll show you how we do this. And um, I like to make my eye cord, um, every other row is a different color. So it, it ends up striped. But if you would prefer, you can make your eye cord all the same color. It's up to you. But since I like mine to be uh, striped, I'm gonna use my light colored yarn next. And I like to knit cotton mill, so I'm going to knit through that first stitch. And the other two. Okay, now instead of turning my work and purling, I'm gonna leave my work facing the same direction. I'm just gonna slip those three stitches to the other end of my double pointed needle. And then I'm gonna pick up my dark colored yarn, 
pull it a little tight because it, it got loose. Pull it tight and then knit across the three stitches again. Whoop. Pull that off. Okay. Knit across the three. And then slip these three to the other end of the double pointed needle. Take up my light colored yarn. Now, when I'm taking up my next yarn, I'm going to go around the outside of the yarn I just finished. So I've dropped this yarn. I'm picking up the next colored yarn on the outside of it. And the reason I do that is because I wanna catch the yarn that's just laying that I'm not using up inside of my eye cord so that it kind of goes up through the inside of the eye cord. Okay, so I'm going to use the light colored now. I'm going to pull that last stitch so that it's the right tightness. And knit through these three stitches. Okay, again, I'm going to um, slip the three stitches to the other end of my double pointed needle. And then I need to catch this into the middle of my eye cord. So when I pick up the next color, I'm gonna pick it up on the outside of it. Like that. Pull it a little tighter because that last stitch is pretty loose and I don't want it to be so loose. I'm gonna pull it tight. And then make three. to the other end. Catch the new color on the outside of the old. Pull it a little tight so that that last stitch is not loose. And go again. And you'll just repeat that over and over until your eye cord is the length that you like it. Um, I think I used about an inch and a half to two inches. Um, but you can make the loop as large as you like. You can make it super big, you know, just as you go, um, you know, keep measuring around. So you'll turn your loop around like this to see if it's the length that you want. I obviously don't have enough length right now because that's not much of a loop. That's more like a bobble. <laughs> um, but as I get further along in my eye cord, I can start measuring it and putting it down here as a loop. And then I can decide if that's the length that I like, then I can just stop. So I'm gonna keep on going until it's the size that I like. Um, and then when you are done making it the size you like, then come back to this video and I'll show you how to sew the eye cord onto your hot pad. All right, so my eye cord is approximately two inches now. That's about two inches. Yep, that's a little more than two inches. But I think it looks really good as I as I go down and pretend that it's sewn on there. That seems like a really good um, size loop. So I'm just gonna do <clears throat> one more row. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the next yarn up, which is dark. Oh, I need to make this stitch here. That's loose, so I'm gonna pull it right to the right tension and go ahead and knit through those last those three stitches again. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move these back to the end of my double pointed needle. I'm gonna put my this needle down and I'm gonna re-thread um, my dark yarn through my tapestry needle. Okay, put it back on your tapestry needle. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through all three stitches. Just right through them with our tapestry needle. Take off your double pointed needle. Don't need that anymore. And we're gonna pull your tapestry needle all the way through. And pull it tight 
And you also kind of want to pull the, the lighter yarn tight again, because that's loose again. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down through the center of my eye cord with this dark yarn to hide it. Okay. So I just go through down through here. Just find you know where to put it in through the center. And just go through the center with my tapestry needle. I go about halfway, poke it out. I turn it around to make sure that my needle isn't really showing in any places because I don't want this yarn to be showing. Okay, and then I pull it all the way through. And that is basically weaving in that um, dark yarn. And I can just go ahead and cut that yarn off. Okay, take it off your tapestry needle and then <clears throat> put your lighter colored yarn on your tapestry needle. Cause this is the yarn we're gonna use to sew it to our hot pad as a loop. Okay, so now we just put it down as a loop and gauge where we're gonna put it in, where we're gonna sew it onto. I want mine sewn right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this V with our tapestry needle. Right through that V. And pull it all the way through. And we're gonna go up through this V with our tapestry needle. And pull it all the way through. Okay, so we're kind of mimicking that knitted stitch again. And we're gonna go down through this V. And back up. Pull your yarn all the way through. Oop, don't let it get tangled like that. Okay, I'm gonna turn our work a little bit and find the next V. So it looks like it's kind of stitch right there is a little bit shorter, but we're going to go ahead and go through that little V. Pull your yarn through. Pull it tight. Turn your work a little bit to find the next V. We're going to go down through this one here. So pull it through, through that V and all the way through. Pull it tight. And find the next V, which is right here. There's one leg of it. And the other leg is kind of hiding, so I'm going to pull it out with my tapestry needle so I can see it better. Right there. I'm going to go through it. Pull all the way through. Sewing it on like this makes it really, really sturdy, and it kind of almost makes it look like it's part of your, um, you know, a continuous knitting around. It just gives it a really nice finish. Okay, and then we're going to go down through the next V, which is right here. And through. Hold nice and tight. Then, now I can see here that I've got this little loop going. I don't know why it's loose. I don't care why it's loose, but I'm going to fix it because I think it looks kind of messy. I'm going to try to figure out where that stitch is. It looks like it's pulling on this one. It's right there. I'm just going to pull that tight. And then what I'm going to do is a little trick. I'm going to put my needle through here. I'm just going to sew that stitch down into our work. So that nobody knows that that was a loose stitch, but you and me, it's our little secret. Now, when we're doing double knitting, weaving becomes a super easy task because all you have to do is go down through your work, across a few stitches, I usually do two or three inches worth, pull it out the other end. And since I want this stitch to be anchored, like I don't want it to end up pulling out, I'm gonna anchor it by going in 
um, the next bar. So you see this little bar right here? I pull my fabric apart a little bit. You can see the bars between the stitches. So I came up between these two bars, that one and that one. Now I'm gonna go down on this bar so that I anchor my work and I go back this way. Now make sure that on the other side you're not putting the needle out the other side. You just go across, poke it out wherever, about two inches away. And if you really are worried that it's gonna become undone, you can anchor it again so here's a bar that I went through. I went between this bar and this bar. So I'm gonna go down here. See how I'm, I'm catching that bar? And I'll go back. Now you can have no worries that that will ever come undone. And go ahead and cut your yarn. There you go. Now you have a nice little loop at the top of your hot pad. Looks like it's all part of your knitting. And the only thing you have to do left is to weave in these bottom ends and then block your work to the size you want it. And good. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to make the hot pad that you see in this video, be sure to check out the description. I'll put a link in the description for the pattern. And if you'd like to be notified of new videos as I make them, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Happy knitting!